Brian Wilson, Mary Catherine Hamm, Brian Neiman, today's newsmakers, and you, the morning majority. AM 630. We're joined now on the line by Sean Hannity. And Sean, I understand you're coming to town soon to put on a big Christmas show. Coming to town, back to D.C., and uh, you know what? We got, I think, the best show we've ever put on, and... Uh, uh, looking forward to it. It's, um, it, you know, I've done these big freedom concerts with, you know, 15,000 people, and I've wanted to do a, a Christmas show. Um, I don't know how many times you guys have ever been to, like, smaller theater-style venue um, concerts, but there's something really special about it. And it's a, we're calling it the Hannity Concert Salute to the Troops. And we've got John Andrasik from Five for Fighting. We've got Michael W. Smith, me, Colonel North. Hopefully all of you will be there. And uh, it's going to be a great show. We're going to have a lot of fun, and, and uh, we're really looking forward to all our friends in D.C. coming out. It's December 3rd at the Hyatt Regency, Washington, Capitol Hill. And, uh, by the way, you want to get tickets, WML.com. There's not a lot left, about. by the way. Yeah. There's, you know, it's, we're selling out really fast. It's a great lineup. That's why. All right. All right. Here's a question. We understand you have laid a bet with uh, Lanny Davis <laughs> about the I've outcome. Now, he, he seems... I've laid a bet with Beckel. If Barack Obama wins re-election, I'm, I'm, I'm filing for bankruptcy <laughs> like everybody else in the country. You could go out there and, uh, and protest. You could be part of the 99%. Uh, no, no, I'll be, yeah, I'll be part of the 99 <laughs> protesting and uh, wasting... Don't those people have jobs? I want, you know, uh, I'm wondering, it's the same people day in and day out. I'm wondering, where are the jobs these people go to every day? Yeah, it is kind of strange, but I have to say, you know, we talked to Lanny yesterday, and, you know, he laid down, you know, his gauntlet of why he thinks he's going to win, and we had a lot of people, callers to our show, who kind of felt like Lanny may be right. They're getting a little weak need, Sean, so, uh, you know, fire up the base a little bit. Tell me why you think that Barack Obama is going to go down well, in November of 2012. I, I spent a lot of time yesterday going over Paul Ryan's speech. I don't know if you guys had an opportunity to hear it or, or talk about it at all, but... Um, from earlier in the week. Now, he, Paul Ryan called out the president on his class warfare. Lanny's premise is that, oh, Republicans didn't support the, uh, and he was talking specifically about Romney. They didn't, he wasn't gracious enough in giving um, President Obama credit for taking out Gaddafi. Now, there's not anybody in the world that wanted Gaddafi gone and dead more than me. What bothers me about the operation, though, is that you know, here we're helping these Libyan rebels. We didn't even know who they who they were, and now we've got Sharia law being implemented. And I'm thinking, hang on a second, it, was it better or worse with Gaddafi? Now, you, are you picking the lesser of two evils? Yeah, but uh, you know, we all know what Sharia law means for women. If a woman's raped, she needs four male eyewitnesses. Uh, if a if a woman wants to drive a car, she she can't. If a woman wants to do anything, she's got to get permission from her from her husband. She, you know, look at the the morality police that walk around in Saudi Arabia is a perfect example. So, I'm not sure between you know the the Arab Spring, which is becoming the Arab Winter, and what's happening in Libya. If in the end things aren't going to be far worse off because we didn't think through what the consequences were for our actions and. And working to you know get rid of these dictators. So, I, I, you know, I, I don't think that's as nasty as saying that Republicans want dirtier air and dirtier water. And Republicans, if they don't support Obama's stimulus plan, that women are going to be raped in higher numbers and and that murder is going to go up. So I'm not sure I buy his argument at all, especially in light of all the things Democrats have said about conservatives lately. Well, I was watching the candidates this week, and uh, I'm usually pretty optimistic, but they did make some mistakes out there. And so I'm wondering, I mean, you guys, you interview these guys. How do you feel about how well prepared they are, how quick they are on their feet uh, watching the debates? Obviously, Perry has not shown, uh, but he's been doing some TV this week and trying to sort of pop back into the narrative. What do you think? Look, I think every candidate has their strengths and weaknesses. Um, Mitt Romney is I think he's a much stronger candidate than he was in 2008, much stronger. I think his debate performances have been really strong. Even even though he got bloodied a little bit by Perry going at him uh, in the last debate, I still think he handled himself fairly well. Um, I don't think it serves Perry well to go after you know Mitt Romney on who cuts his lawn. Uh, I didn't think that worked well for him. Mm -hmm. I think... I didn't think uh, Governor Perry did well when he said, either you agree with me or you don't have compassion, you don't have a heart. 
but you know what? Perhaps he got into the race. He hasn't had a lot of time to prep for these debates. He seems to be getting his footing back on ideas, and I would urge all of them to focus on that. Uh, I think his energy plan is strong. I like his flat tax plan. That's where I'd focus. Herman Cain has done very well in large part because of his A-like ability. I've known Herman for 10 years. It, it, people ask me all the time, does his rise in the polls surprise you? And I said, no. I mean, his story is phenomenal. He's worked for Coke. He worked for Pillsbury. He's worked for uh, Burger King, uh, Godfather's Pizza. In most cases, he was taken, he was given the worst financial situation. I think Godfather's was 90 days away from bankruptcy and he had turned it around. Um, and he's got an, an infectious go-to attitude that gets things done. So I have a lot of confidence in him. Um, I think Newt's numbers interest me the most. I mean, here's a guy that was hovering at 2 or 3%, and every debate he goes up about 3%. And, and people say, you know what? He is one of the smartest guys yeah, up there. Yeah. Well, what about Perry? You sat down with him recently. I mean, it, it, he, the numbers do not look good. He's fallen nope. off dramatically. Did you see anything that made you think he might do a, a resurge here in some way? You know, I think he's got the possibility. I think it's Brian. It's possible he can. Um, I think this is a, about as wide open race as I've ever seen in my life. And I think that if he sticks to ideas and gets away from from whatever disagreements he has with Perry on a, I'm sorry, with Romney on a personal level, I think he'll be better off. His energy plan is solid. His tax plan is solid. Uh, we got 80 percent of the country that would support a flat tax. So now he's got to go out there and sell that part of him. And I, I think if I was him, I'd spend a lot of time talking about the, the job creation that he had in Texas. And uh, I think if he can explain those things and do a little bit better in the debates and prove to people that he can win the debates against Obama, I think he'll be a lot stronger. All right, Sean. It's always great to have you on. You're going to be in town on December 3rd at the yeah, Hyatt December Regency. 3rd. And uh, we only have, for, I think for D.C., we only had about 200 tickets left. So if people want them. The only place they can get them is on my website, Hannity.com. And Mary Catherine Ham's going to be singing uh, the Zest commercial. I can do that. I'm actually going to sing Lionel Richie doing country music. Oh, there. We're now going to pull start. all the topics well, together from the show. That's all right. Well. Start with me yeah, again. That's right. So, well, Brian, how do you like radio compared to TV? Yeah, well, I like everything except the first five minutes of my day when the alarm clock goes off. What time, what time are you getting up every morning? 2.45, my the friend. The worst shift in radio, Brian. You should have talked to me ahead of time. I, I didn't know. But I do admire everybody that gets up and, and works hard for the morning show. Thank you, Sean, as Thanks, always. Sean. We'll talk to you soon. All right, guys. Talk soon.